You're listening to the Superman Super Show, episode 17, Superman Meets the Ultra Humanite. Hello and welcome to an all new episode of the Superman Super Show. I'm a host. My name's Ed and a thousand miles over there to my left is another host, Mr. Stephen Orr. Howdy. And Stephen, although on the podcast you won't know this, but he's sporting a new hat too, by the way. A, a Superman-themed hat. I am sporting a hockey team's hat from a local team. It was my birthday last month. This was my birthday present. All right. Congrats, man. What are you, like 20, 21 now? Are you legal? Um, it, it, it 20 was a, it was a big plus one. 30. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, it's the, the 30th anniversary of your 20th birthday. That's right. That's right. So um, for our banter portion, I have a little something. Okay, banter away. We have a review over on Apple Podcasts. Oh, cool beans. Um, it's actually been up since uh, June 18th. Okay. I just, I just happened to check the other day, and I, and I saw that we had a review. Uh, so I thought I would read that out for everybody. Uh, it was put out there by Radio, at Radio Superman. Ah, Radio Superman. He actually signed his name to it, and since that's viewable to the public, I will say his name, Matthew Cody. And the title of the review is Super Dynamic Duo. Ed what? and Steven are re- what? 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 I was going to say I thought I thought this was a Superman show, not not the Dynamic Duo. Well, he's he's super, confusing us. Wait a minute. Super Dynamic Duo. Oh, okay. That all makes right. us better than the Dynamic Duo. Oh, okay. The adjective is it mm-hmm. makes all the duo. Okay, I got you. He says Ed and Steven are reviewing Superman's adventures, starting with Action Comics number one and moving forward. This is the fourth podcast I have listened to that has decided to cover the Golden Age, and I'm glad to say this is a fun podcast where the hosts have a good rapport, nice senses of humor, and a great deal of affection for the source material. Because I like to read the comic before I listen to a podcast based on it, in most cases, I like the fact that they give a brief synopsis of the story. I'm here for their reactions, insights, and commentary about the comic, and I haven't been disappointed. I also enjoy their banter and like the fact that they interact with the listeners and feedback. So take flight. And then he has in parentheses, eventually, because Superman didn't fly right away, maybe just jump as high as you can right. with the Superman Super Show. It's a great time. Many, many kind words there. Thank you yeah. very much. Appreciate that. That. Was, that was a nice review. I think that pretty much covers everything that I hope that anybody listening to us takes away. I mean, yeah. not that I would be knowledgeable. I don't really care about that. Although I guess if I wasn't, it wouldn't be, you know, but the the banter and enjoy listening to the, the stories and the synopsis and things like that. That's that's good. Cool beans. Yeah, because this is not a history podcast. This is not a, a, I guess, informative podcast. We're not doing a panel by panel. Right. We're, we're not uh, educators. Yeah. We're not, uh, uh, you know, academics that are dissecting the sexual proclivities off screen of Superman. And, you know, no, that's. Whoa. Yeah. Sorry. Took a All turn right. there. That I have more banter, but I'll, I'll save that for the next episode. Okay. Okay. Banter uh, times two. Banter concluded. Chakunk. All right. So today we are. Lo- <laughs> ching, ching. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Today we're looking at Superman Meets the Ultra Humanite, which appeared in Action Comics number 14. This was written for us by Jerry Siegel, penciled and inked by Paul Cassidy. Nobody, unfortunately, has ever been able to track down who colored or lettered it. Maybe one of these two gentlemen, we, we just, n- nobody seems to know for sure and is willing to step out there and, and say so. Action Comics 14 was published by DC Comics and has a cover date of July 1939 with an approximate sales date thanks to every comic book podcaster's favorite website, Mike's Amazing World of Comics. Thank you, Mike, for having such an amazing site that everybody uses, and if they don't, everybody should use. Agreed. And I realized today as I was putting these notes together, I don't – I think I have failed – each and every time we've done an episode to put the link to Mike's Amazing World in, in the show notes. So, mm, okay. Uh, Mike, I apologize. We, we will fix that. And the on sale date, according to Mike, is June 2nd, 1939, with a cover date of July. So not a, not a real big spread of time there, um, 
way back in 1939, whereas now we used to have three months. I don't know that we have three months anymore. Is it still three or is it now two? I, I, I don't know. Uh, since we've uh, determined that the point of the, the cover date versus the sale date is to determine when to take the book off the shelf. Right. That was all a newsstand thing. I don't think it matters much anymore. So, Well, I know previews is now two months uh, in okay. advance, whereas it used to be three. So I yeah. just wonder if, if that is indicative of perhaps the lag between Indicia and actual uh, calendar date. I don't know. Chris, uh, you may yeah. have run across this information uh, and may be able to educate us. All I right, was about to say, maybe listener Chris Parton knows. Or uh, for that matter, Doug or Terry, uh, if either of you guys know, go ahead and- Yes. And who, if, if you're in, watching live, again- out. Yeah, feel free to leave your comments, ask your questions as we go along. Uh, we, we like audience participation. All right. In this issue, Superman travels down into the subway where a tunnel has collapsed. He discovers that a wall was constructed of inferior materials. Further up the track, he sees someone also inspecting the wall who is beaten up by some thugs and thrown into the path of an oncoming train. Superman saves the gentleman. The man tells him that he is City Inspector Hughes, who believes that the Star Company, which built the tunnels, used improper building materials. He also believes that the two thugs were associated with the Star Company. Superman travels to Star Inc., and not to be confused with, uh, what is it, Star Laboratories in current Star DC? Labs and Star City. Okay, yeah. See, now they might, you know, they might eventually be a link, but right now those don't exist as far as we know, so. Right. Superman travels to Star Inc. and comes across the two thugs who roughed up Inspector Hughes. He threatens their boss by dangling him out the window. As he does so, the two men throw him and the boss out the window. He cushions the boss's fall, then grabs him and jumps back up to the window. He makes the boss write out a confession, but the two men have already escaped. He tracks them down, and just as he's about to catch their car, it becomes invisible. But he notices some tracks heading to a deserted shed, and sure enough, inside he feels the outline of an invisible car. As he wonders about this, a trap door opens, which drops him into a machine that encases him in crystal. We discover that Star Inc. is a company run by the Ultra Humanite. He reveals the last time he met up with Superman, he escaped via parachute. As he's talking, however, Superman revives, destroys his crystal prison. He approaches the Ultra Humanite, who presses a button and drops through the floor. Superman destroys the floor to get at him, but is unable to find him. He does grab the two thugs and discovers that the invisible car has disappeared. He turns the two men into the police. But what of the Ultra Humanite? So, um, we also have a comment from Chris. Who knows? I think it's because a three-hour show isn't sustainable, but a two-hour... Oh, wait. What was the question? Oh. WWE Raw is on. Look, you need to get away from Raw and go AEW, brother. It's a better product. It's far more entertaining. Cast off the WWE. Be healed. Be healed. Preach, brother! Okay. So, um, that is... Steven, where is the synopsis that we use typically taken from? DCFandom.com All right. So, there is our accreditation to that information just to be on the safe side. Don't want anybody hitting us on YouTube for stuff, man. They'll shut us down. So, Stephen, what did you think, man? This was fairly typical mm -hmm. for what we've seen so far in action comics. Um, Superman finds some injustice, some corrupt entity that is doing something wrong, and, and he goes to put a stop to it. Um, I made some notes as I was reading this because there were a number of moments that I found fairly funny. Um, I think my, my favorite part, my favorite panel in this entire story is panel number 27. And it's after he, he, he takes the guy from the subway and they're, they're, they're up on a roof. And suddenly out of nowhere, it says emerging through a skylight, a department store detective abruptly dives at Superman. And the guy actually yells out, gotcha, which <laughs> I just, this just large man in a bowler hat just pops out of nowhere. Gotcha which uh, I thought was kind of funny. Um, what did he do wrong? Being on the roof? I, I guess. I, I, that's, I yeah. Have, you know, how, how dare you be on the roof of this store? Now, we haven't seen this dude in another story, have we? Not that I'm aware of. Okay, so it's not like a lingering thing that Superman 
destroyed a store somehow or something in apprehending somebody in the the house dick here said that he thought he would uh, that that he'll get even with them or something none of that yeah. okay yeah I'd, not that I'm aware of what why what I mean what point this certainly doesn't serve any point at all for the story no it it's 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 kind of a weird just a, a weird thing to include it's not even uh that maybe superman needed that just so he could he could leave the, 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 uh, yeah. no so that's that's what makes it funny to me there's no purpose behind it large man in a bowler hat Pops out of a skylight and yells, gotcha. It's, that it's, just it's cracks me up. Two panels uh, from nowhere in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, it's uh, – yeah, I won't, I won't even look to see what my funniest uh, panel was. I'll, I'll agree with you that that probably is the, the height of the humor in this story because that's, that's pretty daggone weird. It is weird. I've also got uh, panel 35. We have Superman hanging from a ledge. Hanging, Yes. I think it was radio. We haven't started an official hanging count, have we? We have not, but we talked about it on a previous episode because uh, I think it was Radio Superman that, that brought that up as far as things to look mm. out for. It was Superman hanging okay, from the yeah, ledge. Maybe, maybe tomorrow um, I'll go through what we've talked about so far and put yeah. together a number. Now, it's hanging by either one or two hands, correct? It right, yeah. Just as matter. long as he's hanging from okay. a building. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, I'll, I'll go through and look and see. We definitely get because I think Radio Superman maybe has read ahead of us a little bit. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Or or just his experience having read it in the past, maybe or something. He yeah, I remember he gave us the heads up. Oh, you like that? Well, yeah. look at how many times he hangs. Yeah. yeah. So I also found it interesting in this issue because um, one of the previous issues, or at least the last time that we recorded, we were only able to get two episodes recorded. Mm -hmm. Um, we were supposed to talk about this issue the last time we recorded. Right. And, uh, I, we mentioned a moment and I don't remember which issue it is. It, it was in where he falls from a building and cat catches himself on a ledge to keep himself from, from hitting the street. And we were, I think we were just w throwing out ideas. You know, we know now that Superman could survive a fall like that, but were, were they, did they not know that at the time? Were they not ready to, yes. to make that call? And then here we are in this issue. He falls from a building and he, he carrying somebody and he lands in the middle of the street on his feet. Right. And the, yep. the only thing that seems to worry him is causing damage to people below as he's falling. Um, right. Is the street, not the person right. he's carrying. But he does. This is like uh, panels 57 to 59. He as he hits the ground, a streetcar runs into him and he is such a powerful man that the streetcar immediately starts to tip over, but he's so super fast, he's able to run around to the side of it and catch it and set it up right. right. I thought I thought that was pretty Proper pretty cool. There, back up now. there are certain moments, let me real quick, there's certain moments yeah, in these yeah, books, and one of them was when he caught the bullet when somebody was firing a bullet at, at Lois. Mm -hmm. There are certain moments in these stories where I think they they do these little things that really impress upon you uh how powerful superman is and i and and i think that those moments are done very well and i think this was one of them the fact that he okay. he falls from a building lands on his feet a streetcar runs into him goes to tip over and he's able to quickly run around to the side of it and, and stop it from tipping over and, and I, I don't know found it, found it impressive panel 60 I think a regular human being would probably have a dislocated shoulder at this point <laughs> yes. it i mean uh, you know, um, even though he can only jump, he's only holding dude by the wrist. So I, I think perhaps Superman owns that arm now, uh, yep. I think, is is what what happens there. For, so. for those of you who don't have the issue in front of you, Superman, after uh, riding the, the streetcar from falling over, the, the guy Hughes, I think his name was. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. He, he jumps back up to the building with Hughes and literally just grabs him by the wrist as he's leaping. And I feel like what we're missing in this panel is a word balloon coming from Hughes where he's going, ah, <laughs> his arm is being ripped out Something, of his side. Yeah. Yeah. That's, um, yeah. yeah. The, uh, the last thing I had, and let me get over to it, was panel 81. So I guess I should, I should also say, actually, I had one, one other note that I, that I skipped. And I wanted to talk about the title of, of this story. Okay. Despite the fact that we're uh, over halfway through with this collection, 
for for new new listeners, uh, Ed and I are reading these stories using the Superman and the Golden Age collection. Despite having volume one, the the big yeah, hardbacks, vo- volume, volume one, yeah. one. Uh, despite being over halfway through this collection, despite the fact that every time I put show notes together for these shows, uh, I I go to the index to get the the titles of each story. There's a bit there that I've never noticed. And the most of the titles to these stories have little asterisks next to them. And then a little note at the bottom of the page that says these titles were originally untitled and are titled here for reader convenience. And I have to say, whoever decided to call this story, Superman meets the ultra humanite. First of all, he's already met the ultra humanite. He met him right. a couple issues back. Yeah. And this is not like the second. This is like the third. Third time ish, yeah, second or third. So, yeah, and um, that's right, Chris. Come with me, crack, and then the man screams. Uh, ba- su- yeah, basically, Superman's yeah. halfway to the building, and he looks down and realizes he's just holding an arm with nothing attached to it. Superman owns yeah. that arm. But uh, whoever named this story should be slapped in the face um, because for those wow, of us harsh. reading these for the first time. The last time we saw the Ultra Humanite, he apparently possibly died in a plane crash. They couldn't find his body. Right. But the, to me, it's almost kind of a big reveal in this issue when the Ultra Humanite shows up because oh, Superman okay. follows those guys out to the, to the, to the, the, the ramshackle shack out there in the country and falls through the roof or whatever into that that box. And you're like, oh, the Ultra Humanite, he's alive. But. We already knew that because the title of the story is Superman Meets the Ultra Humanites. So. so you're talking, you're you're making a reference to in 20, when was this book published? 2010? 2016? 2016. Yeah. Um, somebody spoiled, yeah. spo- spoiled it by using that. Even if they didn't come up with it, they spoiled by using that title. For yeah, the title I, I think the, they could have come up with a better title the strip. for this, this story. But once we meet. Or we we learn that the ultra humanite is alive. So Superman. Well, first of all, did we mention? I can't remember the synopsis mentioned that the car that he's chasing suddenly goes invisible. Yes, that's pretty clever. Uh, for with 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 no indication as to how by us, yeah, we, yeah, we never does, saw. Well, we he, no, they push a button. That's it. Pressing this button will do the trick. Yeah, yeah that's what the the getaway man says. But, but Superman, th- cle- that's all. Yeah, Superman cleverly notices, however. That the tire tracks continue to be created in the road, so that's what he follows. Right. And so when he when he forces his way into this shack, a trap door opens up beneath him, and he falls into this box, and into this tank, and the the lid uh, slams shut. And that's when we find out that the ultra humanite is alive, and we get this wonderful line in panel eighty one where the ultra humanite says, "Behold, my mortal foe, imprisoned in crystal." So that I can look upon him and laugh until eternity. That's that's truly, great stuff, truly evil right there. dude. Yep, yep. It's like it's not enough for me to defeat Superman, so he'll stay out of the the crimes that we're trying to commit. But uh, I want to I want to create something out of his dead body that I can look right. at for the rest of my life and just laugh. Ha ha ha! That way I can you know? I can gloat forever. Yep. That's yes. Uh, that I think was the last note I had written down for this story. Well, Doug, that could very well be, but I think Superman handled all those dudes a couple stories ago. So I, I don't think there's any left anymore. You know, when he took on the uh, the taxicab mafia. Yeah, I think that was the the bad driver story. Um, I, I, although I, I will say that um, it, it comes up again um, in one story. Yeah, one one more story probably that we'll get to tonight. How? Um, uh, campaigny Superman can be. He he just gets this idea yep. and it is it is the absolute worst thing that has has been imposed upon society at this particular moment when he thinks it. And and that's all he needs and he just he goes off, you know, busting down doors and and breaking jaws and just, you know, it's just like Yeah, he's very impulsive. Oh man. And sometimes it just it doesn't seem like it necessarily takes a whole lot. Now, yeah. you know with the car um, he he was friends with someone I believe that was killed in an automi- automobile accident. Yes. That was the impetus. Yep. Okay. Well, that's that's very um, you know very heartwarming that this seemingly immortal alien 
became so attached to his his became so attached to his pet human yeah. that he because uh, that's got to be how he looks at it. I mean, come on, um, you know that that he he went crusading to to right the wrong of his 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 pet human. Um, now so, he was raised by a kindly couple in Kansas. We that has been established. This, they don't. I don't think they mentioned Kansas, but but good good wholesome. A uh, uh, heart, uh, heart of the country kind of upbringing, cornbread and and taters and corn and and yep, that's I agree. Not that I am making fun. There is nope. nothing wrong with any of those things. No, that's I, I eat. I eat them ad nauseum. So it's, I'm not allowed to eat yeah. corn. But that's oh. that's one you'll, of you'll the, get there. the the big reasons I love Superman so much is that unlike a character like Batman who. I mean, he may have been raised just fine, but the the whole, re- you know, Batman, his whole deal is ultimately he doesn't want anybody else to have to go through what he went through as a kid. Or, well, right now, um, it's mainly vengeance. Yeah, right. Uh, I right. think is what Batman That's where is it after. Starts. Now, it, you know, it'll it'll turn to you, you got to make that good somehow. And, and they figure how to do that a little bit later on. But right now, it's it's just it's it's vengeance. It's yeah. um or or. or <laughs> Justice with a an asterisk, you know. It, it's kind of hard justice yeah. by Batman, and I say this because actually, right now, um, I recently found a, a podcast that I started from the beginning. They're about somewhere between twenty five and thirty episodes in, and they're talking about Batman from the beginning. Yeah. Um. So I've I've been reading. Actually, I read a couple tonight before I read our Superman issues and. Um, it's interesting reading these two characters in approximately the same time frame, yeah. um, and and how the but but anyways yeah so Superman it, I've always thought of him as a Boy Scout that that's how he comes across to me yeah he, he's a super super Boy Scout yeah um, and so even now we see that he is being used as the um, the foil to raise awareness of. Apparently, issues that are striking these guys as they're living in Cleveland or yeah. living in Toronto or wherever they're living, these are issues that are, are in the front of their mind or they wouldn't yeah. be writing about right, them. Right, exactly. You know? So, yeah. you know, just like we've talked um, on another uh, another show that I'm a part of, how a lot of the contemporary books are these dark and, and dreary and kind of post-apocalyptic and... And if you look at our world over the past two to three years, I could see that that kind of thinking, I guess, would be relevant in a lot of people. Yeah. You know, Russia and being sick and economy and, you know, the world is just coming to an end. So let's write about that, you yeah. know. So, it, yeah. So, and when I, but yeah, it's when I speak ahead, about, Steve. when I'm speaking about Superman, as far as one of, you know, the thing that always, one of the things that always made me, uh, drew me to the character, I am speaking about like more modern. John Byrne era Superman, um, mm-hmm. because except for these few issues we've read so far, what is this issue 14 of Action Comics? I don't this is all the experience I have with anything really pre John Byrne. Pre Byrne. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, for me, it's always been with Superman. It's it's the fact that he was he was just raised uh, in such a fashion that he um, looks out for others. And. That's that's really kind of his his big thing. Now, granted, uh, a lot of times people are, you know, from burn on, they're they're throwing him against like dark side type type villains and whatnot. But, you know, in the end, despite the, you know, the the cosmic uh, baddies that he seems to go up against a lot in the end, he you, you can just boil him down to this is a guy who was raised to um believe that helping other people is the right thing to do. And so that's why he does it. It's, right. it's he, he didn't have a uh, mom and dad gunned down in front of him. He didn't have a uh, Uncle Ben, um, you know, he let a criminal go and that criminal killed right. his Uncle Ben. He didn't have something like that. It was just, that's just the way his parents raised him. You know? Yeah, completely different reason yeah. that he's on the track he is. And I just, it, I, it, I, I, completely I different. All righty, man. I I don't really have anything more to add, I think, than we've already said. How about you? No, let me uh let me just look at it again real quick. Um Okay. Yeah, we learned that the ultra humanite survived because he had a parachute. He makes he's really not in you know, for a story called 
Superman mm-hmm. meets the ultra humanite. He's really not in the story for more than a half a page or a full page. Once you right, put all yeah, the panels it's together, it's not it's, even half the yeah. story that he's in. It's yeah. But he encases Superman in crystal so he can have something to laugh at for the rest of his life. <laughs> Superman immediately flexes his muscles and busts free. And the ultra humanite pushes a button and he drops through the floor and he escapes once again. So, yeah. Hey, Stephen, put up Doug's comment there. I think that's a that's an important one. Doug says, I've always been drawn to the hopefulness of Superman. Yes. That that is as good a descriptor about the character yeah. um, and, and the character inside, not the character of the comic book, but, but the character of Superman. Uh, I think that that is as succinct as you can put it, that um, that's what Superman is. That's what he does. That's what he exemplifies. That's what he, you know, whatever adjective you want to put there, yeah. that's that's Superman. So. And I, I think it was John from John Reads Comics over on Twitter that mentioned uh, something to the effect of, that's one of the reasons they refer to him as the man of tomorrow, because he exemplifies a better future. There's always hope for yes, tomorrow. Yeah. No matter what we're going through today, it'll be better tomorrow. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, for those of you uh, watching live, um, is my freaking camera just freezing? Like all the time, is my video just constantly freezing? Because every time I Not look that up, I've noticed. I'm, I'm, I'm frozen. And I'm always freeze. It's, it's always frozen as I'm blinking or looking. And it looks like I'm just <laughs> exasperated <laughs> with everything you're saying. It's like it looks like I'm just constantly rolling. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. No, it, it doesn't look like it's freezing all that much to me. It has grabbed a couple times, but not. I have to, again, comment about your 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 newly shorn face because oh. you um, at least through this Internet window. You look a lot like a dude that uh, I was best friends with in high school. Not the guy we talked about before we started recording, but um, it's just that's I think why I'm having such a weird time with this because you look like this <laughs> Sorry, guy. Man, I'm just like I, I, I can I can mask up if you want me to. No, 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 no. I can put on a balaclava if you want me Ooh. to bring it all the way up on my eyeballs. Maybe we should start you know. go. You know, next time we get together, we should start uh, recording in balaclavas. The, the, the that, unknown that hosts. Be, okay, that would be. I, I have bags. several that have patterns on them, mm-hmm. and they would be much more interesting to look at than me, I'm sure. Well, so you know, I could yeah, do that's that. Your opinion, Mister? I could be. I could be that guy. All right. Yeah, I don't have anything else. So, all right. Uh, Doug says he hasn't noticed yeah. that you're freezing on. Uh, uh, which which brings a point. Um, what was the uh, Dr. Pepper um, dude's name that was the computer generated that kind of glitched and jerked during the commercial? Max Headroom. Yes. Did you see where he's coming back? They're bringing no, him didn't. back with it's the original guy? actor. Yeah. Nice. Uh, Matt yeah. Frewer, I think his name was. Yeah. Like Amazon or somebody like that is going to, I nice. think that came out of SDCC um, this past weekend, but it wasn't a big, big announcement. But yeah, I've, I've seen that a couple of times. Okay. Um, sorry about that. All right. We do want to thank everyone for listening to this episode of the Superman Super Show and every episode that you have listened to previously as well. If you want to drop us a line, ask us a question, or just shoot us some feedback in general, you can send an email to the Superman Super Show at gmail.com. All one word, no spaces. You can also reach out to us on Twitter over at, at Supes, S-U-P-S, Super Show, or come join the fun over on the forum at forum.justanotherfanboy.com, which we recently started a, a couple threads over there that seem to be very popular, I've noticed. Uh, Steven's much more than mine, but he's a much more interesting guy than I am, so it's to be expected. Well, I think I, I think it's just that my comic is easier to get a hold of. Uh, could be. Could be. Big, big, bigger fan base, I think, too. You know, more people over the years have read. Do you want to tell everybody what we're doing over there? Because it was totally your idea. Sure. Um, what, what one of the, the kind of podcasts that I... Uh, listen to the most and enjoy the most is called an index show. Uh, the host reads and talks about a comic book with the idea, theoretically, that those people listening will read also. And then there will be some form of interaction, uh, usually, you know, comments or emails sent or tweets or whatever. But it's it's that it's it's kind of like a like a mini book club. It's not one of these big, you know, we read a big trade paperback kind of book clubs. It's it's just a read along. And so I I thought, well, you know, I'm I'm wanting to read more books and and do something with them other than just reading them and setting them aside. So mm-hmm. I thought, well, you know, this is a cool idea. We'll start a 
a section of the forums where each comic book title has its own thread, and then you can comment on each individual issue as the person reads it, whether it be either of us or someone else if they want to start the same thing. So that under, in Stephen's case, Spider-Man, issue 144 has all its space for its comments, and then the next thread will be 145, and, and et cetera, et cetera. That way, uh, in the future, whomever can go in and see, well, what did they say about uh, 178? And open it up and you see all the comments there. Starting with a run through by whoever started the thread, hopefully, of the book, eh, with or without pictures, and just a, a rundown, a synopsis, you know, um, to start things off. So that's um, both of us started. Stephen was wanting to do um, something else along those lines. And I think he, uh, without speaking for you, Stephen, pulled some or all of that over into this concept on the forums and and do it there concerning Spider-Man and concerning a certain conspiracy involving people who look like Spider-Man. Yeah. Not to completely the, give it away. The I think I described it as the most reviled Spider-Man event in history. Indeed. Indeed. And uh myself I went a little bit farther back um and I was have been interested because you hear a lot about Will Eisner and other things that he has done. And you always hear the spirit thrown out, you know, as, yeah. as one of the things that Will Eisner has done. His graphic novels, though, seem to get more attention than the spirit. But everybody mentions the spirit, but nobody talks oh, yeah. about it. It's just he had a movie, you know, so, I mean, people thought he was big enough. The movie didn't really do very well. But yeah, I never saw um, it. And so I thought, well, you know, I, I've put together over the years, I think enough between three or four different sources that I can read the spirit from the beginning through – beginning being 39 through uh, 1952, maybe. Um, his weekly paper appearances, newspaper, not the other comic books that will come out in series and things like yeah. that, but the original uh, spirit stuff. So I, I started a thread starting back in June of uh, 1939 with the first spirit thread and am basically doing the same thing. So yeah. those two uh, boards, if you want to call them that, I think have gotten the most looks recently, but also the most traffic consistently over the past couple of days that I've, I've seen generated on the forum. So yeah, that's cool. Chris says, oh, man, I need to get in on this. You yes, do. Chris. You, you do, do, Chris. You need to do and some painkiller Jane over there, dog. Exactly. I, I will say to, to anybody who um, is a member of the forum, and if you're not, you should be. Um, if you have a particular run of books that you want to do this, uh, the, the category is called Let's Read Along. I have Because I'm the admin of the forum, It's I have to go in and create the board within the category. So if for example, Chris Parton, if if he, um, which I don't think he's a member. He okay now. He has had trouble logging in since really? the very beginning, mm. and I've been after him to get it fixed, but he hasn't gotten it fixed. But he has suffered some some tech problems with getting logged well, in. That I can see that just making you. That's the, those are the kind of things that you know. I'm just like, yeah, never mind. I tried to log in <laughs> twice and it won't let me. I'm just gonna. There's other stuff for me to, to, to yep. mess around with, but um. You know, if you're a member and you 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 have a run of comics that you would like to do this with, be it um, you know whatever, I'll, I'll use ElfQuest as an example. I want to do one of these for ElfQuest. Another, another good one. Get get a hold of me. Go in. You know, if you want to leave a, a a maybe I'll start a thread in the suggestion forum. That would work. You know, folks, if folks want to want to get one started, then I'll, I'll create the board for him. Yeah, because what Stephen has to do is he has to set up that specific comics board. Yeah. And then you, whoever wanted to do this idea, can start with the issues going forward. But the, the yep. main and it, it has to be done that way so that each issue has its own folder and everything in that folder responds to that one issue. That way there's no. Two or three posts later, somebody comments about something three or four posts before or anything like that. It, it keeps it a more linear running conversation. Yeah, let me see if I can. Uh... <laughs> Damn. Chris jumping on wholesale. <laughs> Chris is like, I got three right off the bat. Painkiller Jane, Cyberforce, and Dreadstar. See if I can uh, share the screen. Everything on my end is running so slow. It's really kind of upset about it. Oh, don't get. 
gonna cry. Don't don't get too wound up. Oh, I never get too. Tech tech these days is like that. But uh, let me finish here real quick. Um, all the links okay. that I've mentioned for the show will be in the show notes. And so um, next week, I'm Ed, and that's Stephen, and we'll finish up this one particular part of the episode. Uh, talk to you guys later. Ciao. Bye. <laughs> Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. Because I like to read the comic before I listen to a podcast based on... I read that wrong.